Hello everyone. First of all, let me introduce myself. My name is Jello and I'm the head of physics and computer science at Ashton Sixth Farm College. I also run a channel called Z Physics and this video is a collaboration with the awesome channel of Physics Online. Now today, Lewis and I have decided to collaborate on the topic of entrance admissions exams to Oxbridge. So we're going to be looking at the PATH, the NCAA and the ENGA exams which are coming up for Oxford and Cambridge. We're going to cover a few very, very important tips. So let's have a look at tip number one. My first tip is to ensure that we're really familiar with the syllabus of the exam that we're taking. As an example, I've displayed here the PAD syllabus from the Oxford Admission website. So on this page, you're going to find all the topics that could appear on the physics aptitude test. As an example over here, for instance, in maths, there's going to be some algebra. There may be properties of logarithms and calculus. You should be familiar with differentiation, integration, integration is reverse of differentiation, etc. In terms of the physics, a couple of highlights that uh, we need to look at. There's a lot of physics which is commonly taught in the first year. However, there's quite a few topics which are commonly taught in the second year. For instance, circular motion and uh, moving on as well. There's quite a lot of electricity and magnetism as well. Now, if those topics have not been taught yet in your class, what you need to do is ask your teacher for some extra resources and really make sure that you understand those topics. Don't forget as well that if you've not been taught a particular topic across both of our channels, you'll be able to find hundreds of videos that will allow you to learn it independently. Okay, well, let's have a look at Tip number two. My second tip would be to ensure that you've done all the available past paper questions for your chosen examination. Pay particular attention to the timings because they're of extreme importance in these entrance exams, particularly so for the Cambridge entrance exams, which involve a high number of multiple choice questions and going through some of the easier ones in an efficient way is of absolutely crucial importance. My third tip is to practice using dimensional analysis. This is a technique that is not so often used in A-level, however, it heavily features in physics Olympiad problems and admission tests. As an example, I'm going to show you guys the 2020 PAT, uh, one of the questions from the 2020 uh, PAT examinations for Oxford. This is question 19. So this is a question about the Euler number, which has no units. So this quantity over here on the left, has no units like so. It's often used in fluid flow calculations, depends on the pressure, density, and the fluid velocity, such that. And we're given a new equation. What I've written over here on the side is just the units of pressure. So I've just said that pressure is force over area, mass times acceleration divided by the area. And I have the units of pressure to be kg, m to a power of minus one, s to a power of minus two. Now this question is asking us about the ratio of a to b to c in its simplest forms. Well, let me show you an interesting trick that we can always use. First off, I'm just going to write down all of the units raised to that power. So for instance, pressure is is kilograms meters to the power of minus one s to the power of minus two and this will be raised to the power of a now density that's mass or volume so that's kilograms meters cubed so kg m to the power of minus three raised to the power of b and velocity is just meters per second so i'll be ms to the power of minus one raised to a power of c. Now what we can do is just expand out the, those brackets so this would be equal to kilograms raised to the a m raised to the power of minus way a s to the power of minus 2a and then doing exactly the same kg to the power of b m to the power of minus 3b m to the power of c and s to the power of minus c. Now what we can do is group all of the like quantities and uh, for instance kilograms times a multiplied by uh, kilograms to the power of a multiplied by kg to the power of b well this will simply give us 
kilograms to the power of a plus b. Now let's see, we have meters here, meters here, and meters here. So this will be equal to m to the power of minus a minus 3b plus c. And finally, we have the second, so that'll be s to the power of minus 2a minus c. Now here's the critical bit. Because the units on the left are non-existent, because we know that the Euler number has no units and this is written over here, what we can say is, once again, on the left we have no units, that the combined power of each of those quantities will have to be equal to zero, because anything raised to the power of zero will be equal to one. Then we can make a system of equations. So for instance, uh, let's look at the simplest one. So a plus b will have to be equal to zero. So we can write this down. A plus b will be equal to zero. And we also know that uh, minus 2a minus c will also be equal to zero. We could also say that minus a minus 3b plus c will be equal to zero. However, I have a feeling that we'll be able to get the ratio between a, b, and c just from those two equations. Okay, well, looking at this one, we can immediately say that b will be equal to minus a. And um, let's substitute that back in here. So we have minus a, which uh, times two, which is essentially 2b minus c is equal to zero, which says uh, 2b is going to be equal to c. Well, hang on a minute. This means that we've actually found our ratio already. In its simplest form, let's say that a is equal to one, then because b is equal to minus a, then b will be equal to minus one. And because c is equal to 2b, then c, of course, will be equal to minus two. And this is our ratio. And we've found that pretty efficiently using our technique of dimensional analysis, setting the units on the left hand side equal to the units on the right hand side. Okay, so tip number four, assuming that we're very familiar with the syllabus and we've solved all the available past paper questions. Now, where do we get some extra practice from? Well, actually, it turns out that the Cambridge exam, for instance, would be a really, really good practice for those of you guys who are taking the Oxford entrance exam and vice versa. Another great resource for practice would be the problems from the British Physics Olympiad. So have a look on their website and uh, see if you can solve some of the round one Physics Olympiad problems, for instance. If um, you've solved a lot of these as well, an even better practice of really, really challenging problems would be some of the International Physics Olympiad problems. My very final tip would be to remember to enjoy the problem solving. Physics and mathematics are some of the best, most fun disciplines that you can study, which really tell you how the natural world actually works. And it's something worth keeping in mind. Finally, I'd like to say thanks to Lewis from Physics Online for hosting me on his channel. Thank you very much, guys, and I'll see you in the next video.